Somebody is in your family is not feeling well today. We pray that God is going to bring healing today in the name of Jesus. We, maybe maybe your business is not going well. Maybe your marriage is not going to go, not going well. But we believe that God is going to restore and bring great things in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, we call on you. We say, please pray, 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 pray. Call on God. Pray, 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 pray. God is going to do great things in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, wherever part of the world you are in, begin to believe, God, that great things are going to happen. Begin to believe, God, that great things are going to happen. That there's a change in the atmosphere. That your life will be changed. That your children will change. That your relationship will change. Your business will change. Your nation will change. In the name of Jesus. Every incantation that has been set against you shall be broken down. Every wall, every barrier that has been set, that has been shaking you is going to come down in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to, to prosper. Call people, tell them to log on, on, on Facebook Live and begin to see the great things that are happening. Begin to see that God is opening up great doors from wherever you are. Receive the ministry of, what, of these women of God that God has called to come and minister to us tonight. As we open up more opportunities, let your word, Lord God's word, begin to be alive in your life and great things will happen. Let me call Mom Suela to, to, to now. Let her come, let her receive, receive her ministry. She's one of the ministers that are doing great things in the kingdom of God. Receive her ministry. Great things are happening. Mom Suela, take off. Hallelujah. <laughs> Greetings uh, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm Mamusuela, uh, your host tonight. Um, uh, uh, I'm to be praying specifically for our children. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll begin with a word of prayer before we uh, we, we 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 pray we, we, before we get into our time of word. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your mighty name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, your presence that is sweet to us, oh Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for righteousness. We thank you for peace. We thank you for joy in the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father, for your anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, even as we are here to lift your name on high, Father, in this year, oh God, that has been so uncertain, Lord. This year, Lord, that has been so full of attacks, Lord, so full of challenges, Lord. But tonight we come and stand, Lord, and declare that you have crowned the year with your goodness. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that you are here, Lord, uh, to deliver us, oh God. You are here, Lord, to to, to, to break every yoke of bondage. You are here for us. We thank you, Father, that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding unto the simple. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that even as we are going to be fellowshipping tonight, Lord, our lives will never be the same again. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, as I have said before, uh, my task uh, uh, tonight is to lead us uh, to pray for our children you know, to cover our children. Um, most of you will agree with me that there is an onslaught, you know, on our children. There is war that has been waged, you know, uh, on our children. You know, our children are under attack. I mean, uh, when, when the era of COVID-19 began, you know, <laughs> we were told uh, young people are safe, you know, uh, this, uh, those who do not have any underlying medical conditions, they are safe. But as the year progressed, you realize that uh, our fear, you know, COVID-19 uh, didn't really uh, attack like what we perceived or what we thought was coming. But then the, I saw the enemy beginning to attack young people, you know, beginning to attack our children. I mean, uh, Almost every day, you know, when you
case I, I remember uh, the, the case that happened in June, uh, the, the Rotford case. Uh, I don't really remember the name, but I think it was the Hofatso Fule, the 28-year-old 28, 28 uh, lady who was stabbed and left her. And she was eight months pregnant. So I also remember an incident that just occurred in, uh, I think it's in, it's in October uh, in Cape Town where a three-year-old toddler, you know, was, was killed by a pit bull, you know, a dog that uh, he normally played with, you know, a dog from the neighbors. It, it killed him. And, you know, when you, sorry for bringing up these, uh, sad memories that, you know, as an intercessor, these are things that I take personally, you know, it, it happens where it happens, but I take it personally, you know, because it's actually an attack on our children. You know, it's an attack on my children. It's an attack on your children. So you cannot afford to to sit back and relax and say, I'm not getting involved. You know, we are all getting involved. This is a, this is a personal attack to us. You know, it, it's so personal to us. I mean, the rape cases rising up with each and every day, suicide cases amongst young people, you know, amongst the future, the future of the nation, you know. So I take it as, as a war declaration, you know, the devil has declared war on our children. You know, he has declared war. He wants to destroy uh, our future. You know, he wants to destroy. He wants to destroy. We know, we know that the thief cometh to steal, to kill and to destroy. So we are here to, to protect our children. We are here to say, devil, you cannot have our children. You cannot have our generation. You cannot have anything that belongs to us. You know, we are here to declare that godly seed will be delivered even in this generation in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So if you were to go through the statistics, you actually get shocked that 60% um, of crimes committed uh, involve the use of substances and 80% of male youth deaths are alcohol related, you know, the accidents that happen targeting young lives, you know, this premature death that is happening nowadays, you know, what is happening? What is happening? We are here to say, devil, you will not continue with your agenda. Amen. Amen. So as it was, you know, in the times past, so it is now. Um, uh, I remember the times when uh, uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, you know, was born. You know, a decree was was issued, an order was given to kill children or boys two years and younger. You know, uh, I remember even times where Moses um, was uh, born. You know. An, an order was given as well. An order was given uh, to say uh, every male child who is born of the Hebrew women, you know, should be killed, should not live. So I'm here tonight to call upon parents, to call upon mothers, to call upon fathers to say, let us not sit back and watch what the enemy is doing. You know, let us let us fight back because the power has been given to us. You know, the strength has been given to us. The grace is there. The grace is there. We just have to stand up and speak it. So I want us to quickly read from uh, Exodus 1 verse 22 and Exodus 2 verse 1 to 6. Um, it reads, um, so Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born 
uh, you shall cast into the river and every daughter you save, uh, you, shall, you shall, every daughter you deliver, you shall save. Uh, so uh, Exodus 1, Exodus 2, verse 1 to 6, and a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife of daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of uh, bulrushes for him, daubed it with shout and peach, put it in, in it, put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of, of Pharaoh came down to bath at the river and her maidens, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark coming among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Hallelujah. Glory to King Jesus. I love uh, Moses' mom. You know, she was very protective. She was very protective, you know, of uh, what God had, had blessed, you know, in her life, what God had entrusted her with, you know. She gives birth to Moses. Uh, the Bible says she looked at Moses and she said, this is a goodly child, you know? And guess what she does? She does something about that. She, she doesn't think of the decree, the order that has been passed, you know, by Pharaoh. She looks at her child and says, this is godly seed. I will not hand him over to death. I will not watch my child being killed. You know, she hid the child for three months. She hid uh, Moses. She hid baby Moses for three months. Hallelujah. So I'm here to say to mothers, you have a responsibility to protect your child. You have a responsibility to hide your child. You have a responsibility to make sure the plans and purposes on your child um, of God comes through, hallelujah. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order that the devil gives to us. I'm one person who has learned, you know, to, to live ignoring the devil and not giving him any attention. No matter what he, he says, you know, no matter what he threatens, I just look at the word, what the word of God says. You know, the word of God says we shall live, you know. The word of God says we shall, we, shall, we shall have long life. You know, premature death is not in the order of God. Mm -hmm. Let us not let us accept some things. You know, premature death is premature death. We cannot say it's the will of God. You know, so I'm here to say this order that the devil has passed to our children, we are going to nullify it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, we are, we, are, we are going to be like uh, uh, those Hebrew women who, who, when they were told, you know, to, they were given an order actually that when they are delivering uh, babies from Hebrew women, they should just, uh, you know, get rid of all boys, but they did otherwise. So, there is grace for people who fear the Lord. Amen. Yeah. There is grace for people who, who, who follow, you know, the word, the word's leading, you know, God's leading. Hallelujah. So let us not uh, be threatened or be afraid, you know. You know that the Bible says uh, uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. He has not given us a spirit of fear. So if you find yourself afraid, you know, it's not from God. It's not coming from God. It is, it is, it is, it is from the devil. And uh -huh. we do not do things uh, according to the devil's way. 
Amen. So it is an error for our parents to keep on bearing us. It's an error. It's an error. It's an error that should not go unchecked. You know, we need to correct these things. We are, we are giving birth to our children. They should live. You know, they should serve God. They should serve in the kingdom of God. We are not giving birth to, to children for the purposes of hell or for the purposes of uh, the devil. Hallelujah. So, yes, we are called to protect our children. It is our duty. Let us protect our children. You know, protect what God has given you. He has entrusted you. Protect with all diligence, with everything that is in you, everything. Protect, protect your child. You know, we should not be like those two women who gave birth. You know, one of them slept over the, the child and the child died. She was a careless mother. You know, you don't, you don't conceive, carry a baby for nine months after that you sleep on the baby. She was a careless mother. And we want to bind that spirit, you know, in women that is causing us to sleep on our children. We are killing our own children. We are neglecting our duties. We are here to cancel that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I said, number one, we are called to protect our children. And number two, we are called to bless our children. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are called to bless our children. We are called to pray for our children. We are called to, to cover our children. You know, we are called to stand as spiritual authority in the lives of our children, you know. We are called, you know, God actually trusts us, you know, to, to cover our children in prayer. Amen. Amen. So I want us to read from Psalm 127, verse um three to five uh the bible says children are a blessing you know from the lord and so we ought to be good stewards uh of our children amen, amen. children are a blessing from the lord Hallelujah. amen Right, there it goes. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Amen. Amen. I want us also to quickly read from uh, Genesis 49. You know, where Jacob was, uh, you know, it come to the time uh, of his death and he calls his children, you know. So in calling his children, in gathering up his children, uh, he, 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 he actually wanted to pronounce uh, uh, blessings, you know, to his children since he was uh, about to die. So I'll just read briefly. Uh, where I'm interested in, uh, from verse one. And Jacob called his sons and said, gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their counsel. Self-will, they hamstrung an ox, cursed be their anger, for it is fierce and their wrath for it is cruel, it will divide them in Jacob and scatter them uh, in Israel, hallelujah. So um, unfortunately, I'm just going to end there because of our time. 
but this is a chapter where he, he blesses some of his children and then uh, these uh, few ones, he, he pronounces curses on them. Why? Um, I'm going to uh, uh, look at uh, Ruben. He says, he, he curses Ruben because of what Ruben had done, you know. Ruben had slept with one of his wives, so he, he curses Ruben for that, you know, and these other two. So this is what we do as parents at times, you know, our children uh, get it wrong, you know. Sometimes our children are, are, are working in error, you know. Your child uh, maybe goes into a practice that's practicing strange uh, practices like homosexuality, you know, uh, your, your child is in drugs or your child, you know, is, has become something which you never thought they would become, you know, and at that moment you curse them. I just want to appeal to parents and say, let us not curse our children. Yes, they have done wrong, you know, yes, it's a situation that they are in, but they still need you as a parent, you know, they still need you to, to bless them, you know, they still need you to, to, to correct whatever has gone wrong, you know, with them. So I'm here to appeal to us parents to say, let us bless our children, you know, let us bless our children, no matter the situation, you know. I remember even in the book of Chronicles, um, Jabez's mother, you know, the Bible says Jabez was more honorable by, than his brothers, you know, but uh, he was given the name Jabez because the mother said uh, she bore him in pain. So she named the child Jabez. And when you read uh, the name Jabez uh, meant that you would eventually be causing pain, you know, he would be a man who would go out there be causing pain, you know, be hurting people, you know. But Jabez makes a prayer, you know. He says, Lord, that you may enlarge my territory, hey! you know. So it means it can be reversed. What name were you given because of what you did? What did your parents say after you had... Uh, done what was not pleasing before them. What did they say? I'm here to pronounce that it can be reversed. I'm here to, 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 to declare that our children shall live. You know, our children shall live. I'm here to reverse the decree of the enemy on our children that they would die, you know, before their time. I'm here to say, um, like Moses, you know, if you read in Deuteronomy 33, verse 1 to 6, Moses uh, comes in later, in, later on and he, he, he calls the 12 tribes of Judah, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, sorry. So he says to, to, to Reuben, let Reuben live. Ah. You know, I love, I love what Moses did. says, let Reuben live. You know, he was up, but he said, I will not live, you know, without correcting this error, you know, Rupen needs help, you know, so he says, uh, if you read, uh, he says, uh, let Rupen live and not die, let his men be, uh, no, let his men be few, you know, so Moses came in to reverse, you know, the case that has been, that had been pronounced, you know, to, to Rupen, you know, so uh, we have that duty, you know, to be priests, you know, for our children. We have that duty, you know, to say, my child will not die in this. Hallelujah. Okay. So in closing, as we go for our time of prayer, um, I just want us to pray for three specific things. I want us to pray against premature death, uh, suicide, Pray for the purposes of God to be fulfilled in our children's lives and pray for wisdom for our children. Amen. Amen. So this is a prayer that you don't do now because today we are here praying. But this is a prayer that you do uh, at the comfort of your home every day, every night. Hallelujah. 
We bless your mighty name, King of Glory. We thank you, Father, for life. Let our children live. Let our children live. Let our children live in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we speak life. 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 We hide our children, Lord, from from water, Lord, that has been released in the atmosphere, Lord, that they will die. No weapon fashioned against our children, no, our generation, Lord, shall cross. No weapon fashioned against us, no weapon fashioned against us and shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, every plan that you have for our children shall stand. Lord, the purposes, Lord, on our children shall stand in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover them in the blood of Jesus. We cover them in the blood of Jesus. Let them live. Let them live. Bless them, oh God. Bless them. Bless them, oh King of Glory. Bless them. Bless the works of their hands, Lord. Bless them, oh Lord. You say that, Father. You say that what we see shall be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver our children, oh God, from this wicked generation. Deliver them, oh Lord, from this evil. Deliver them, deliver them in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember mercy, Lord, for our children. Remember mercy, 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 remember mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let love and faithfulness not leave them. Let love not be the mark in their lives. May they grow up, Lord, as children who honor their parents. In the mighty name of Jesus, may they grow up in the order of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hooray! And beloved, we thank God. We thank the God that the, uh, he is doing great things uh, in, in our lives. And today, even as we continue to pray. I want you, wherever you are, to continue in the atmosphere of prayer because God is shifting things in the spirit and God is shifting things in the spirit. Is God is shifting things in your family. God is shifting things in our nation. God is shifting things in our cities. God is shifting things in our neighborhoods. God is shifting things in our marriages. God is shifting things in our in every area of life that we, 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 are, we are in and in every sphere of life that we are in, God is beginning to shift things around. And I, I pray that you begin to open up your heart, begin to open up your mouth, mouth, begin to pray and begin to see what God is beginning to do in your life in the name of Jesus. And I, 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 I want to see great things happening. I, I want you to open up your mouth. I want you to believe that God is going to be shifting things in the name of Jesus, every time, every incantation, every situation that is that is that is hindering you, God is going to turn it around. God is going to bring a new birth, a new situation. In the name of Jesus, we pray that God that God opens up the opportunities uh, for you to begin to minister, for you to begin to to, to share with people in your own sphere of influence so that people can begin to see the grace of God which is happening at the moment. Wherever you are, we thank you. We begin to pray for your children, pray for your children, pray for your daughters, pray for uh, that if the enemy cannot be able to, to, to take them in the name of Jesus. We thank God that great things are going to happen. We thank God that great things are going to happen wherever you are. Open up your mouth, begin to pray, 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 begin to believe God that great things are going to happen in the name of Jesus. I want also to, that you, to get ready now. We are going to be receiving our Reverend um, uh, Sibia to come and share and minister a word to us today. Uh, as, as you please, I want you to receive her with, with joy and gladness because she's going to be ministering a powerful word to be able to, to minister particularly 
on how God is going to be able to restore our marriages, or going to restore our families. And I wanted to open up. After she has done, in the next 40 minutes, we are also going to be able to receive Dr. Pale Cooper. She's going to be ministering after her, and she's going to be closing, declaring things of our city, of our nation, of our, our careers, of all the things, that all the broken things in our lives can begin to be restored again. I, I want to welcome uh, Mom Reverend uh, Lady Cannon uh, Sibia to take over and begin to share. Mom, we receive you with gladness. We, this uh, begin to share as God leads you, it declares God leads you, and uh, we appreciate what God is going to be doing in through your life and ministry in Jesus' name. Take over, ma'am. Greetings, beloved, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, uh, our pastor, minister, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, minister Nicholson, I appreciate you so, so very much for this opportunity you've given unto us. And uh, thank you to the pastors. We're praying, we have been listening, and we're praying together. And uh, this indeed is a powerful conference where we are making sure that the heavenly father receive us so well. This is the time where we are making sure that uh, our, our broken crayons can still color. Hallelujah. I am here, uh, beloved. I'm going to share a word of God together with you and uh, welcome everyone who's um, joining in and uh, may God bless us all. You know, when you spoke about the broken crayons can still color, you gave me a picture of uh, seeing what God can still do in spite of every situation that one would have come across. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to think, to say, uh, you just need to sharpen yourself no matter how broken you are. And it just needs one person to just say, okay, I'm gonna use the opposite side of my crayon. You know, the nice part of the crayon is not like a pen. You know, a pen only works on the one side, but if a crayon is broken, the inside of the crayon can still do the job. Unlike the pen, once the pen is broken on the one side, there is nothing you can do, you throw it away. But a crayon, that's an amazing thing. So therefore, it means in God, we are great crayons. And with God, he said, once the crayon is broken, I'm here, I'm the fixer. Allow me to go through uh, what I have prepared. My, I will focus mainly on broken. Uh, and uh, I will then explain, and uh, I believe God will give us um, um, a great utterance in terms of his word. You know, I took the word broken. So that means once you are broken, you are no longer in the first form that you were in. You are no longer as, as high as you would have been. You are no longer as uh, best as you would have wanted to be. You can't reach everything because you are broken. But you know, once a person is broken, there is so much bitterness. Allow me, I'm gonna break down this broken into different words. The word acronym broken. I will then take the word broken and start by saying a person who is broken is a person who is bitter. A person who is broken, when you take R, it says uh, robbed. The third word from broken, it said offended because it comes from the word O on broken. And K on, uh, on broken, it says kicked out. You have been kicked out, you have been kicked. And the third, the, the, the other word say uh, from broken, it says it's an E, the letter E, it says empty. You know, once a person has been broken, is a person that has been is bitter, is robbed, is offended, is kicked, it's kicked, it's M is a person who is empty. And the last word that I'm going to use is that once a person is uh, broken, the last uh, letter says you become naked. And these are the many times women find themselves in. They find themselves in relationships 
that have been broken, that are that breaks them. They find themselves thinking the people love them and they come, they kick them. They, th they think they have uh, friends. They think they have people that they know and only to find these people are gonna leave them empty. They find love in people who will come and break them and leave them naked. And once you find yourself broken, kicked, naked, robbed, it is very, very difficult for you to recover yourself. It is very difficult, even sometimes when you have friends and people who try to mend your wound, they will mend your wound, but there is only one person who is God, who is able to use you in spite of the fact that you have been broken. It is only God who can sharpen you. It is only God who can make you useful. Because we as people, once we see you broken, we laugh at you. Once we see you naked, we, 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 we mock you. Once we see you robbed, you know, there's a, there's a, I once was driving on the road uh, in my car, minding my own business and uh, not even looking to see that there is somebody who's gonna break my window and try to snatch my handbag. So that means the, the person who comes to break you, it's someone who comes to steal your joy. It's someone who comes to, 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 to break you, to come and uh, take something that is beautiful out of you. And then comes these other people, well, that, that's a person who comes to rob you. You know, and they, they are people who come just to offend you. You know, sometimes as you are driving, as a driver, you will be minding your own business there on the road and someone just come in front of you and you become offended. And you say, what, what, what the hell is this person trying to do? Because that person offends you. He has uh, done an offense on the road and you are minding your own business. And that is the tendency of the devil while you are minding your own business. While you mind your business, you might mind your business with God because the enemy is always waiting to make sure that he steals your joy. Come with me, beloved, in uh, the book of Genesis chapter three. This is where I want to show you how while you are minding your business. Sometimes you are in this beautiful marriage that you have. Sometimes you, 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 you are married into a relationship that is not working for you and you don't know what to do and you are broken. And sometimes things just do not work well. You have been broken. But listen, when I say to you, while you are minding your own business, there's an enemy that is watching you. In Genesis chapter three, verse number one says, now the, snakes was, the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord God had made. There are people who come into our life who are cunning, who want to take away from, uh, from us. There are people who come into our life who wants to rob us of our beautiful things. And now when it goes forward, it says, the snake asked the woman, did God really tell you? not to eat from uh, eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden. And the woman excitedly, sometimes we receive people excitedly in our hearts, not knowing they have come to can, in, to can us. We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden. The woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. Then the snake replied, that's not true. You will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know that it is good. And uh, um, uh, um, sorry, and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat. And she thought how wonderful it would be to become wise. Sometimes we walk on the road of God, we walk knowing that we wanna be wiser. And, and at that moment, you think uh, everybody who's talking to you is telling you something good. 
every, and you were just on the road, worshiping God, praising God, doing everything that you think God has called you for. But the enemy come and whisper to your ear and say, why are you doing what you are doing? What would you benefit of doing what you are doing? People are enjoying life outside. You keep on saying, God, 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 you are able to do other things. And these other things become attractive to you. And you start walking away from the presence of God. You start walking away from what God wanted you to do. And at that moment, everything else that the enemy wants you to do is to make you see his things as if they are good. As we move on, it says, that evening they heard the Lord God walking in the garden and they hid from him among the tree. But the Lord God called out to them, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid and hid from you because I was naked. You know, when the enemy comes, he takes away every joy. He takes away every uh, pleasant moment that we had with, with God and we remain naked. But in our nakedness, one thing I love about God is that he is able to mend us. He is able to change our nakedness and cover us. That is when you are broken. That is when you think like you can't color anymore. That is when you think everybody see you that you are naked. That is the time where you think my brokenness can never, I can never come back before God again because I have done so much wrong. But God comes and say, let me clothe you again. Let me give you clothes again. This is where you now find in uh, Psalm 140, 140, 147, where God now comes says and say, I am the mender of the broken hearted people. God heals the broken hearted and bandages the wounds. So I'm here to say, if you are broken and you feel you are not worth doing anything anymore, God is here to mend it your broken heart. If you think uh, because you are broken, there are some of us who are broken, but God is able to bandage you and bring you back together to where you are supposed to be. That is Psalm 147 verse number three. God is a mender. God is, uh, is the only one who can mend us. So I am here to say to you, do not be afraid when you are broken. Do not be afraid when you are naked. Do not be afraid when you feel you have been robbed. Do not be afraid when you feel like everything has been taken away. The only thing that you need to do is to hide yourself. God says, do not hide my child because I am here to mend you. I am here to, to bandage you. I am here to, to make sure that you come alive again. I am here to say, you can write again. I'm going to, to read with you the story of uh, of Naomi in the book of Ruth. If you would go with me uh, in the book of Ruth. It says in the book of Ruth, Ruth was rich with her husband. They had two sons and they moved and went to Moabite. But when Ruth was there, things changed. I'm trying to say to you, things can change. Life can be difficult. You can find yourself divorced. You can find yourself uh, being beaten up by life. You can find yourself without a job. You can find yourself in a position of weakness. You can find yourself in a position of nakedness, of emptiness. That is where uh, Naomi found herself. She felt empty. She felt like she was useless. She felt like there is nothing good that will come out of her. But once you are able to listen to God, you know, and it says here, uh, uh, when you, you move forward, it says in chapter one, verse number six, it says, when Naomi heard in the Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. You know, when you are broken, but you remain in the house of God. When you are empty, but you remain in the house of God, you will have an ear 
to hear when God comes to give you your help. You'll have an ear to know when God says, I am here to come and deliver you. You will be able because you will be in the right place of God. And at that moment, Naomi heard that God is coming to hear his people. He's providing food. For someone, it could be food. For someone, it could be your job. For someone, it could be your finances. For someone, it could be your marriage. She and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. You got to be prepared to return and go where God says you must go. And most of the time, we as our African people say, you are about to ring. You know, especially when you, you are in a failed marriage. You don't even want to go back home. And at that moment, you have nothing. You can't even start. You can't even rent a flat. You can't even do anything. And you start to say, what will people say if I move back home? What will people, what will my neighbor, what will, what will? And at that moment, we fail to hear God. And we, we, we fail to be humble enough to go and start from scratch because at that moment we feel our ego does not allow us. I have moved from my home for the past 15, 20 years. How can I go back? But you need to have the spirit that uh, Naomi had. Naomi decided. She could have stayed and said, when I was still in Bethlehem, everything was fine. Now that I have come to Moabite, things are bad. I'm not going back. I will rather die here. But she felt like the need to go back. And she said, well, they prepared, they, 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 uh, uh, um, in verse number seven, with her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living. Sometimes you need to leave the place where you have been living because there is only pay. Sometimes you need to move and go and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. As long as if you do not know that there's a land of Judah where you, where you had your peace with God, where you had your, your, your presence with God, where you have felt like I'm the only, I'm only at the presence of God. If you have missed that, you need to be able to say, I'm going back to God because Judah represents thanksgiving. Judah represents praise where you will be able to go back and say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. But if you remain in the situation and, and, uh, and hate yourself and say, um, I'm not worth it, but God is coming to restore you today, you are just as important. And because you are broken, I have something good for you. You have been broken. I can use you even much more because your, 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 your brokenness bring you closer to me. That is the most important thing that we need to do. We need to be able to come closer to God when we are broken. Because in your brokenness, that's when God is able to use you. That's when God is able to show you his kindness. I believe, uh, beloved, you are hearing me and those who are struggling, staying and afraid to walk away. And they are being abused in that home. You are being beaten every night. You are, you are being abused. That's the best way that I can use. Even if you are broken in that manner, God is able to mend you. God says, move. God says, I am here, I am going to change your name. You know, as they, they walked, as they traveled, uh, here are the people uh, who, are, who are now seeing that Naomi is coming back. And the people started to say, is that not Naomi? People will not stop talking of where you were. People will not stop to, 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 to mock you. People will not stop to laugh at you, but you need to have a purpose of your going back. You need to have to know that God is calling you for something different. God is calling you for something new. But if you continue and you listen to people who are laughing at you and you listen to people who are mocking you and you do not have a direction, 
you will find yourself in trouble. Here is Naume. When the people say, oh, Naume, what happened to you? Because she was bitter at that moment. You know, she, she was so bitter. She felt like, why do you call me Naume? Rather call me Mara. Because God has taken everything from me. God has not been happy with me. And Mara, it means is a name of pain. And Naomi, on the one side, it means a beautiful name. It means a pleasant person. It means a person with, with, with pleasant things. Good things comes from, 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 from Naomi. And she felt she does not deserve that name. But I'm here to say you deserve the name that God has given you. The name that is above every other name. And God said you are being renewed. And when God renews you, he gives you a new name. And your name will be greater. And your name will be even more powerful. And your name will be spoken about. And people will not remember where you are coming from. You have to make it a point that even when they remind you, do you remember? I remember one time when, when I started my, my, my job, I started as a cleaner. And I moved levels because I knew that I was not about to become a cleaner for the rest of my life. And one time I came back to the company I was working for and I had now moved to, from it to another one and I was doing well. And the manager who hired me, he said, he, he talks to my, uh, the new manager says, you know, I am the first one who hired here. She was a cleaner in this company. And at that moment, I am a manager. And that I felt like she wants to bring me down and remind everybody that I was a cleaner. I am here to say to you, even if they try to remind you, when God lifts you up, there is nothing they can do. There is nothing that will, will bring you back down into the position of a cleaner because God has elevated you into a position of a manager. And you will remain there as long as God says so. So therefore, I am here to encourage you, beloved, to say, when, 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 when it says now here, as I'm, I'm, I'm quoting verse number six of, uh, uh, of Ruth chapter one, it says, when Naomi heard in the, um, no, I've already, I've already gone past that one in the May, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm already there. But here is what I want you to, to listen to me. Because Naomi moved back to Judah. Because she did not care what the other people are saying about her. And I want to say to you, we thank God because God changes your name. And once he changes your name, there is nothing that any other person can do. There she is. She arrives with shame, but God changed her shame into beauty. She arrived there with pain, but God changed her pain into pleasant. Because why? She came with his daughter-in-law. Her daughter-in-law, Ruth, came. And uh, by God's grace, Ruth got married to Boaz. And when God married to what well, God married to Boaz, the most interesting to me in chapter three, it says, Naomi, in, uh, uh, you know, they don't talk about in, in, in chapter four, verse number 13. The most interesting thing is they are not talking about Ruth here. But they still say, Naume gains a son. Remember, Naume is gaining a son through Ruth. But her name, because God has already assigned, has assigned her name to be Naume. When Ruth receives a child, when Ruth gives birth to a son, but they say the name of Naume, Naume received a son. So that means, because God has elevated you and God has brought you back to Judah, everything that surrounds you will blossom. Everything, because God is changing your name, everything that surrounds you, even the people who give birth around you, even the jobs that are around you, they will also say, we are where we are because of the Naomi that came back into the house of Judah. So it says, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled 
heir to conceive. What is it that you are looking for God to give you? There is something good. You have lost your job. You might have lost something wonderful, but God says he is ready to give you something new. He is ready to give you something that you will love. And she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, praise be to God who this day has not left you without a guide, guiding redeemer. They talk about Ruth. They, are, they talk about Naomi, not Ruth. You are my Naomi today. You are feeling broken. You have been divorced. You don't even know what to do. You are in a, you are in a state you think, uh, because I'm divorced, I am not worth to be used by God. All I'm coming to say to you today is that serve God. Worship God. Remain in the house of God. Because there is a Boaz coming your way. And that Boaz coming your way, it will be the Boaz who will give you something beautiful, who will respect you, who will give you a son. Then the Boaz who comes to you will give you the desires of your heart. But that would happen only if you are in the house of the Lord. You know, I want to give you a, a little bit of, my, of a testimony that when you are broken, God is able to come and mend you. I served God from the early ages. I was 14 when I received the Lord. And uh, because I loved God so much, I was broken on the road. But God was able to pick me up. And today I am standing here as the Reverend Canon Lady. Had, and if God did not break me, when he broke me, I would not be in the position that I'm in right now. I look at myself at the back, I look and say, Lord, had you not broken me, had you not uh, made things happen in a way they did, I was abused. I was, I, was, I, was, I was physically and mentally abused. But I was so broken that I did not think I am worth to worship God. But because God is good, he made it possible that I must go back to Bethlehem. And I went back. And when I went back to Bethlehem, little did I know that my Boaz was waiting for me. And today I stand praising the Lord. I am here to say, even when you are divorced, do not worry because God will mend you. God will bring you your Boaz. God will bring you someone new, someone who will respect you, someone who will treat you like you deserve. But what you need to do is to stay in the house of the Lord. Allow me to pray with you today that God will mend your broken heart, that you will find your worth as a broken cryon and say, God, use me as a broken cryon. And God can only use you if you are willing. God can only use you if you know that he is God. My prayer with you tonight is that, would you be so kind to come before the presence of the Lord and say, God mend my broken heart so that I can find the ability to use, to use my cry on even if it's short, but it will still be able to do amazing things. My second prayer is that God break my bitterness because once you are divorced, you become so bitter so that I may see the beauty in other people, that I may see the beauty in you, that I may see myself as a beautiful, I may be able to appreciate myself. Bitterness heals people. You can't appreciate anything. And say, Lord, heal my bitterness towards my spouse, towards anyone, towards a partner, towards anyone who has broken you, who has stolen the peace of God from you, who has stolen the joy of the Lord from you. And bitterness is the hardest thing. Remove in me the mara and bring in me the pleasantness of you. Because everybody who is pleasant attracts good people. Everyone who loves attracts love. But there's no way you can attract love when you are bitter and you are angry at life. I'm here to say, Lord, help us. I'm here to say, 
mend our broken hearts, bring us back into your love. And we, we want to ask, sometimes you, you are not even broken by your marriage, you are broken because you, you lost a job and you, you fight with your husband to a point that you end up divorcing because of a job. And to other people, finances is also very difficult. But I'm here to say, let's pray together. I'm going to be praying and uh, you can concur with me as uh, I lead this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are our Father, our healer. You are our Father who created us in your own image. You created us so that we may prosper and have life and have it more abundantly. You have created us so that we may know that you are God and we will have a testimony that you care so much for us. You are a God who heals the broken hearted. You bandage us, oh God. Pray, I pray this night, oh God, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray for women that have been broken. I pray for women that have been made to be bitter. I pray for women that have, uh, that have been robbed of their joy, have been robbed of their peace, have been robbed of their, of their life and love that they had because of the people that came into our lives. We have allowed them to come into our lives. Therefore, we became so bitter. We became so angry. We stop even forgiving people around us. We don't even know how to love anymore because we have been beaten. We have been left empty, oh God. We have been left naked. We don't even know how to start to mend ourselves. But God, I thank you tonight because you say you are the mender of the broken heart. I am here praying for every woman who's got a broken heart, who feels naked, who feels something has been taken away from them. That Lord, oh God, redeem them again, oh God, in your power. Restore the joy of the Lord upon them. Restore their strength, oh God. Restore their love because you are God, Mutumala Jehovah, who loves us so much that you gave your only begotten son, that in in him we may find life in him we may find peace in him we may find love you loved us so much father i pray that lord every woman who has been broken today change their names oh god today that they are no longer the broken one they are the brightest of themselves Father, I pray for anyone who is bitter, that Lord, oh God, you are changing the bitterness into brightness, oh God, right now in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I say, Lord, anyone who feels empty, fill their cups with oil, renew their strength, oh God. You say, my God, you will give us the oil to overflow. Father, I pray for the, in the name of Jesus, that your oil, the new strength, the new power may overflow in your women right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we have been left naked. We feel there is nothing left of us. We feel there is nothing goodness that comes out of us. We have, left, we have been left. We can't even love ourselves. We can't even love our children. We can't love, even love our friends. We can't even love anyone around us because we have been left naked. Clothe us, my God, with your love. Clothe us, a God, with a, with a garment of praise because you are the only one who can renew our strength. You are the only one who can give us the garment of praise. Father, I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone who is feeling right now that they are not important, that I cannot be able to do anything, I pray that the spirit of resurrection may come upon them. I pray that, Lord, the bones that have been scattered, I pray that you will mend them together, Lord, oh God. I pray life over those broken bones. I pray life over the, bro the broken heart. I pray life in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let there be life. Let there be joy. Let there be peace in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray this and I receive, Lord, oh God, from you. I say you are God, the giver of life. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the people say amen. Amen. We are thankful uh, to what God is doing in our lives uh, and what God is doing in our ministry. I, I want to uh, before we uh, go ahead, I want to uh, bring in my wife 
And uh, many times we, uh, people ask and say, why do, do we let this ministry? <laughs> and I am doing what God has called us to do. And I want to be able to uh, introduce to somebody that has prayed for me, uh, kept me, that continues to make sure that our ministry keeps on going forward. And, and we, uh, I, I want to, maybe also what we would love to do uh, for those that have come uh, on board today, we want to give to, uh, to five of you. Uh, you there's, an, there's a WhatsApp message or, that you can send to. We'll give you five of t-shirts you can send in. Uh, the, the, the WhatsApp number is 083-512-0503. Double four, zero eight three, five one two, zero five double four. Uh, we want to give to uh, at least five of you that have joined into the meeting today. We want to bless you with with this broken crown steel color t-shirt, and God is going to be able to um, uh, minister to you and become a, a blessing too. Let me invite my my wife to 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 come as well. Uh, and, and greet you and also to be able to uh, oh, she's short my uh, we need to, uh, she's radically challenged <laughs> thank you so much for uh, she prays for me she encourages me uh, she always makes sure that I stay focused what God has called us to do and uh, I, I do think many of you that are on the platform, she's the one that really does a lot of this behind the scenes. She's going to be able to, uh, going forward, is one that is going to run with this ministry. Uh, and we want her to introduce to you, know her, and, and interact with her. Hallelujah. Good evening. Ladies, good evening to everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, um, Janisi. Thank you so much, Mama Suela. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Lady Cannon. Thank you so much to Dr. Coupe. I am, I am really, really blessed. I was a broken client myself, and today I am a helper. God uh, took me from behind the scenes, and today I am a helper to this great man of God. So for me, uh, Broken Cryons is, is just a huge testimony, which is a testimony that I live every day, that God can take you from behind, from a cleaner, you know? So from behind being cooking in, in the ministry for other ladies, for other women of God, but God located me. And as a broken cryon, today I am a helper. Today I am in ministry. I am a woman of God. I pray yes for the gentleman. And I am really, really, really blessed. And I thank God that as short as I am, Reverend Lady Cannon, you said even the shortest cryon can still make an impact. So I am grateful that vertically challenged as I am, I am a cryon that is coloring. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, we, we, we appreciate all of you that have come in today and to minister. And uh, I, I, I want us to be able to, because I know time is going, I want us to, to go straight uh, to, to Dr. Pale. Uh, Dr. Pale has been such a blessing to our ministry. She is going to uh, speak as the Lord has led in her heart uh, on this subject of broken cry and steel color. Many times we have been talking about different things that do self-development, that minister to women, but this year God gave us an instruction that we must pray. So when today, we, all we are doing today is we're encouraging people that can we pray, can we pray, pray for your children, pray for marriage, pray for your family, pray for your ministry, pray for, pray for your country, pray, uh, pray for your neighborhood that God can be able to reign. Uh, I'm so excited, uh, Dr. Pell, ma'am, uh, Reverend Lady Cannon, we are going to be coming to Christ Center's uh, ministry with my wife and family. One of these days we will come and fellowship and uh, 
uh, sit at your feet to be blessed as you have been such a blessing to us. Uh, Mom, Rev Pell, we are, we are giving over to you. Uh, take as the spirit leads. And at the end of the day, I want you, I want you to pray, uh, break things, break things again. And as God wants you to do, and those that have got prayers, please keep sending the messages here. What you want uh, to appeal to pray for uh, as the ministry continues, these messages are available. We'll make them available on the app, download the app. But they also, as in terms of DVD, you can watch them anytime. You can rewatch this whole conference again on the Elevate app on all the app stores. Join the other people and become a blessing. Those of you that have got ministries and that have got uh, content that you want to be involved, uh, download the app, contact us. Let us see how we can collaborate and build the kingdom together. Dr. Pell, Apostle, over to you. <laughs> wow, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mfundisi uh, Sibanda, and uh, also your lovely, beautiful wife. Uh, we bless God for this opportunity. And I also want to thank God for every minister, every vessel that God has used. Praise the Lord. Um, and this time, thank God for Pastor Nisi and Pastor Siwela, also for Mamruti Sabia. We just give God the glory and for all the prayers that have been offered. We just thank God and we, we trust that God has transitioned us into a new season. Praise the Lord. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can, man. Okay. All right. Awesome. Praise God. Well, I, I wanted to just share a little bit on, we've been talking about broken crayon. We've been talking about brokenness. And I think probably every person, every one of us have a story to tell about brokenness. I don't think you can live even as a believer without experiencing some level of brokenness. So brokenness is part of life. And brokenness is what grows us. It grows our character. The Bible tells us about trials and tribulations. And it says that that is what grows our character. And it also grows our faith. So we are not broken to a place of dying, but the brokenness is to build us. And the brokenness is also so that we can become a testimony. And the brokenness is also sometimes to rid us of some carnality, to rid us of some flesh, to sharpen us, to make sure that we are aligned to God's purpose and to God's will. And so I want us to understand that from the beginning, that brokenness, we need to allow the brokenness to build us and not embrace it to, to take us out, but to allow it to strengthen us to build us and to use that brokenness as a testimony to others who will also be broken. I want to share a little bit uh, around Tamar. There's a woman in the Bible who I believe I want to use her as prayer points, some prayer points that will come out from her. And we know the story of Tamar. And Tamar, you please read it in your own time. Tamar, we find her in 2 Samuel chapter 13. And this is the story of a daughter. She was born a princess. She was a daughter to King David. And yet, still being a, a princess and born in royalty, she still uh, found herself broken because brokenness is not dependent. You can be born into a well-to-do family. That does not mean that you will avoid being broken. So it's not just about money. It's not just about poverty. There are different things that will break you. And sometimes circumstances of life will come to, to hurt you, to wound you, to break you, to damage you. And Tamar, in spite of the fact that she was a princess and a daughter of royalty, she was raped, she was abused and raped by her own brother, her own half brother, another son of King David called Amnon. Now, you know, we talk about rape in South Africa. 
and we know that Mohai Mo in, in South Africa, rape and, and sexual violence and domestic violence is one area that South Africa is actually one of the countries that has the highest gender-based violence statistics. I'm trained as a lawyer. And in South Africa, um, you know, we had such high GBV, gender-based violence statistics that President Cyril Ramaphosa in September had to declare a state of emergency concerning gender-based violence. And a, 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 gender, a new gender-based violence bill has just been amended recently. And this gender-based violence occurs even in church. And so there are women within the church who are being abused, who are being raped, molested, and sexually groomed, even within the body of Christ, which is a place where you think and expect to find some level of comfort and security. And so Tamar was such a woman. She was abused in a place where she expected to find security. She, her brother was the one who should have protected her, but instead he raped her. And you may be somebody out there, I know there are many women who've been molested by people they expected to protect them. But I'm here to encourage you today. I want us, we're gonna pray and, and concerning certain prayer points. Tamara was raped by somebody she knew. Statistics show, and I've been a prosecutor for many years in the courts, that many women who are raped or molested are raped by people who they knew within the family. And Kahurma Africa, we are Africans. Sometimes the African culture says that you are not supposed to talk about it. You just keep it in. You are not supposed to share kisipiri. It's a secret. We don't air our dirty laundry. And so that brokenness remains in your heart, in your spirit. It embitters you. It makes your body sick. And even right now, I declare right now that somebody is going to get a healing right now. There's a memory that the enemy has tried to just keep silent and he's tried to silence your, your mouth. And right now we just declare liberty right now to every person who has undergone trauma to your mind. Let your mind be renewed right now. Let your mind be renewed by the transforming power of God's word right now. And we decree release and we decree freedom and we decree liberty from every sexual abuse memory in the name of Yeshua. And we decree and declare the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that his name, there is power in his name to break every chain, every bondage of sexual sin, every bondage of sexual captivity. We decree and declare the power of the name of Yeshua HaMashiach in the matchless name of Yeshua. We thank you. And Tamar, like I say, she was raped by somebody she knew. She was raped uh, by, by, uh, and cheated by somebody she knew. It affected her, her sense of self-esteem. She, she was shamed. Her dignity was impacted and affected. And she, the rape was hushed up. You know, and in many instances, what happened to you may have been hushed up, but in the season, I declare that God is going to release you to go forward. Whatever has stopped you, whatever has hindered you from moving forth in the season, we declare that you will no longer be hindered. You will no longer be stopped, but you will be released to fulfill your kingdom mandate. You will be released to fulfill your kingdom agenda. You will be aligned to your original blueprint for God formed you. He said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, 5, he said, I knew you before you were formed, before you were fashioned, before you even appeared in your mother's womb. Jeremiah, I knew you and I ordained you with a purpose. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. And I 
declare to somebody out there that you are not a mistake. You are not a coincidence. You are a God incidence. You were intentional. You were intentionally created by God. You were purposefully created by God. And God has a purpose and an assignment for you. He's got a mandate for you. Your mandate is to bring change. Your mandate is to bring salt, is to bring flavor. Your mandate is to be light and light has the capacity to confront darkness, to push back the darkness. And so I decree and declare to you right now that arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You are a light. You will push back the darkness. The light of Yeshua Hamashiach is in you. And so Father, we thank you for women who will not be held back, but they will arise according to kingdom purpose. They will arise according to kingdom mandate and they will arise according to kingdom order. Tamar was broken. The person that she trusted was the one who abused her. The person that she trusted used her. And then after raping her, he tossed her aside. And I don't know in what area you may have been abused, but there are three prayer points that I want us to pray. You know, the beauty about Tamar is that even though she was abused and she went through this suffering and it was by a person she trusted, she suffered betrayal. I hear the spirit of the Lord even now saying that some of you women who are broken, you are broken by betrayal. I heard the spirit of the Lord right now. Just say betrayal, betrayal. You have been betrayed by somebody that you trusted. You have been betrayed. Some of you, it's in your marriage that you were betrayed. The marital vows were broken. Some of you were betrayed in the office whereby you were cheated out of a promotion. You were cheated out of a job. You were cheated out of an offer. But I have to say to you right now that that betrayal will not break you because God has something set apart for you. God has something that is aligned for you. God is going to do better than what you expected. In fact, what you were looking for, God said it was below. It was below what he has prepared for you. And I has not seen an ear has not it's, uh, heard and it has not even entered into your mind what God has prepared for you. So do not allow the enemy to embitter you, but allow God to embitter you. Don't be embittered, but be better. Let the lesson, let the experience make you better, not bitter. You will not be embittered. You will be embittered. You will be empowered. You will be enabled by the grace of God because his grace is more than sufficient for you and his strength is perfected in every one of the weaknesses. And so we bless God, we bless God and we give him glory and we give him honor and we give him all the praise in the matchless name of Yeshua. Tamar, guess what Tamar means? Tamar means palm tree. It means palm tree. This was a woman who was broken. This was a woman who was abused. This was a woman who thought there was no more color, but the meaning of her name and your name is prophetic. Every time somebody calls your name, your name is the most prophetic destiny, prophetic calling that you can ever have. And the meaning of the name Tamar, it means palm tree. It means palm tree. So Tamar was a palm tree. And the areas that we are going to pray are going to be over the aspect of palm tree. Now listen to what it says about palm trees in Psalm 92, 12 because we are going to use this scripture as a foundational uh, scripture to pray three prayer points around asking God to move us from a place of brokenness to a place of flourishing. And Psalms 92, 12 says this, it says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So Psalms 92, 12 again. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So Tamar, from a place of brokenness, from a place of being hurt, from a place of, of, of being, you know, of, of, of being uh, wounded, 
uh, from a place of, of having just been destroyed, being destroyed, but her name means palm tree, palm tree. And in Psalms 92, we're told that the righteous shall flourish like what? Like a palm tree, like a palm tree. There are three areas of a palm tree, three unique characteristics of a palm tree that I want us to use each of those characteristics as a point of prayer, as we pray for God to transition us from brokenness to flourishing, from a place where we may have been abused, rejected, wounded, and move us to a place where we flourish like that palm tree. This is the first thing about a palm tree. The palm tree is the only tree that grows. It has some bands, some circular bands around them. And the palm tree, every other tree, they grow with these circles around them and they're like bands. But the other trees uh, do not break those bands. The trees will grow, but the bands continue to circle the tree. What is unique about the palm tree is that as it grows, the, the bands actually begin to dig into the wound, in, in, into the wood. But the palm tree has the unique ability that as those bands, uh, uh, the tree is growing, those, the palm tree breaks those bands. It breaks those bands. So what am I saying prophetically to you? I'm saying that as you grow, as you grow, you will be like that palm tree. You will be like that palm tree, which means every band of molestation, every band of sexual rape, every band of, 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 of wounding, every band of divorce, every band that has tried to encircle you and keep you in captivity because you are going to be like a palm tree, that band will be broken. It will not keep you enslaved. It will not keep you in captivity but those bands will be broken. And so let us pray. I don't know what your band may be. Maybe because of lockdown, because of COVID-19, you are in a financial band. I want you to pray for yourself, for your family, to declare financial captivity. If there is a band that is around you, declare yourself to be like a palm tree and that that financial captivity that financial band shall be broken. If there is a band around your marriage, declare that whatever is holding your marriage in captivity, whether it is a strange woman, let that band be broken so that your marriage can flourish like a palm tree. Whatever band is around you, around your children, a band of drug addiction, a band of, of prostitution maybe, a band of pornography, children out there are being taken in by pornography i want you to pray that whatever band is around you that it will be broken let us pray right now that whatever band is placed around our families placed around our children placed around our husbands our spouses placed around our marriages placed around the city, begin to pray around the city. There's an economic recession band that the enemy is bringing economic recession. Jobs are being uh, uh, lost. Uh, employment uh, rate is going higher. Declare that that financial captivity band over the city, over the nations right now, begin to declare that that band of financial captivity is broken over South Africa in the name of Yeshua. Come on, let's just pray. Father, we thank you that the palm tree is a unique tree. And we thank you, Father, that the palm tree has the capacity to begin to break every band, that the bands will not keep it captive. The band will not keep it enslaved. And so, Father, we speak liberty, liberty over individuals, that they will not be held in a band of, of health disease. COVID will not kill us. COVID 19 will not take us out. COVID-19, Father God, will not place us into hospitals. But Father, we thank you that we walk in health. We walk in divine health. Uh, that Father, we thank you that disease will not hold us as a band. We thank you, King of Glory, that our families are released uh, to walk in the joy of the Lord. The hearts of the sons are, are put together with the hearts of the Father. The nation is released to operate in its redemptive purpose. 
Father, we thank you that, Lord, families are joined together in love and in unity. We bless you, Father God, that the bands have been broken. We flourish as a palm tree, and the bands on, on, on all of us, our homes and our households, have been broken and that we grow. And because the bands have, have, have been broken, we experience growth. We experience physical growth. We experience, we experience financial growth. We experience marital growth. We experience numerical growth. We decree growth over South Africa. We decree growth over our homes. We decree growth, Father God, regarding the word of God. We decree growth in the body of Christ, that childishness is not taken is, is not taking uh, dominion. We decree maturity in the body of Christ. We decree growth, Father God, of the church of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the matchless name of Yeshua, we thank you. We thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number two. Remember, we are still talking about Tamar, which means palm tree. And the first thing about a palm tree is that a palm tree has bands around it, but those bands do not contain the palm tree. They do not keep it held in captivity, but it breaks those bands. And so we are going forward with every chain that has been placed around our families, every demonic chain that has been put around our children, we declare it broken. Okay. Prayer point number two that I want us to pray about. Is there something again very unique about the palm tree? The palm tree is the one tree that knows how to survive storms. Did you know that when a storm comes, when a hurricane comes, when a tornado comes, the palm tree is unique in that the tree can bend. It will bend, but it will not break. All other trees, they, they collapse. All other trees, they break. But the palm tree does not break because it has the ability to bend. And when it bends, the storm passes over it and then it comes back upright again. And so this is my prayer for you and I, that because God has declared us that we are righteous and we shall be like the palm trees. My prayer, let us pray together that when the storms come, the storms will not take us out. The storms will not kill us, but the storms will only cause us to bend, but we shall come back upright. We will be upright. The storms will not take us out. The storms will not destroy us, but the storms, uh, we will just give, give some slight way to come back upright again. We will arise again after the storm. The palm tree is that unique tree that bends, but it does not break. And I declare to you right now that you will not break whatever you have gone through, whatever storm of life that you have gone through, whether it's through COVID, whatever storm you have gone through as a ministry in the matchless name of Yeshua, your ministry in this time, I see that it has, it has bent. But the Lord says to say to you, to somebody out there, you are a minister of the gospel. Some of you in your, in your workplace, God says to say to you right now, it's like your business has gone down. It's like you've had no work or no employment. It's like the ministry, the people have left the ministry. But hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says to tell you that the tree is not broken, that you are a palm tree. And because you're righteous, the ministry is just bending, but it is not broken. It is not broken. It is just bending and it will arise again. And so we speak to your ministry right now and we declare that even now arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I want to speak to a marriage right now. You are suffering right now in a marriage and God says to tell you right now in that marriage right now that your marriage may look like it's broken, but God says it's just bending and it will rise up. It will rise up again. It's bending under the storm, but the storm will be over. This too shall pass. I wish somebody would shout out there and declare and say, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. The storm shall pass. The storm will be over. This too shall pass. Come on, say this too shall pass. This, this too, too shall, shall pass. pass. This Jesus. too shall pass. Hallelujah. This too shall pass. I will bend. 
I will bend, but I will not break. I will bend, but I will not break. I will not break. I will not break. I will bend in prayer. I will bend in worship. I will bend in prophetic decree, my God, but I will not break. I will rise up. I'm just in a bending moment. It's just a bending moment for me right now because I'm bent in prayer, because I'm bent in worship, but I'm not broken. You are a palm tree and you are bent. You are bent in prayer. You are bent in reading the word of God. You are bent in meditation, but you are not broken. And so, Father, we decree and we declare to every person, to every household, to every city, to every province, to Gauteng province, to Free, Free State province, to Eastern Cape, Western Cape, and Northern Cape, to Northwest. Uh, we decree and declare, oh God, that the provinces are bent, but they're not broken, and they will arise to every household, to every part of government, to the legislature, to the executive, to the judiciary, that we may have bent, but Father, we are not broken, and we will arise, because this too shall pass. We will will survive the storm. South Africa, Kenako, Kenako, Africa, Burra. We will survive the storm. We have survived the storm. We will arise and we decree and declare revival in the city, revival in South Africa, revival in Africa. Africa, Kenako, you will be a breadbasket to the world. Kenako, Africa, arise and shine for your light is come. You will feed the world and you will arise and be a testimony to the nations around the world hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that just declare it is so it is so it is so it is so bent but not broken bent but not broken bent but not broken hallelujah our last prayer point our last prayer point using the analogy of tamar a woman who was rejected a woman who was abused a woman who was molested a woman who was broken but she did not she did not die she was not killed off because what she was bent but she was not broken she the storm passed and the third prayer point i want us to pray as we begin to close is that the third unique thing about the palm tree now many of you know that in a desert there's no water there's no water in a desert and so that means that very little grows there are very little few things that grow in what in a desert because there's not much water but the palm tree is the only tree in the desert that not only does it survive it doesn't survive because one would say nothing else grows, the palm tree survives. The palm tree does not just survive, actually it flourishes. It flourishes on very little water. So God was saying, even in this Psalms 92, uh, 12, that scripture says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. And so our third prayer point is to say that you may have gotten gone through some issues. You may have gotten, gone through some challenges. You may have gone through physical abuse and mental abuse. Like um, Mam Fundisi um, Sibia said, you may have gone through emotional abuse, but I'm here to declare to you that you didn't just survive. You're not just a survivor. You know, I think it's that, what's that group called? Destiny, is it Destiny's Child? They sang a song, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor. Listen, that is too low a level. Don't decree yourself as a survivor. You are not a survivor, you are a flourisher. The palm tree does not just survive in the desert. The palm tree flourishes. I mean, that means that it's healthy. That means that it's blooming. That means that it's doing well. You are beyond a survivor mode. You are not just in survival mode. You are in flourishing mode. God is going to take that testimony, that testimony of molestation, so that you can begin to tell your testimony. Because the Bible says they overcame them by the blood 
blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And the word of your testimony makes you an overcomer. It brings you into overcoming level. You may have been on level one. We know about levels. Hashtag, on my levels, COVID levels. There's level one and then there's level five. And God has taken you with your testimony from level one to level five victory. You're moving from a level one victory to level five victory. You're moving from survival mode to flourishing mode because of your testimony. It has strengthened you. It has given you spiritual muscles. It has given you grace. It has given you ability. It has given you capacity to fulfill your kingdom mandate, your kingdom assignment. It has given you spiritual stamina to finish your marathon. So you are not just in survival mode, but you are in victory mode. You are in flourishing mode. You are that palm tree that will bend but not break. You are that palm tree that has the capacity to break every band of captivity, every band of limitation over you. You are that palm tree that has the ability, hallelujah, the ability to move into flourish mode. And so as our last prayer point, I know it's late right now, in the last three minutes, I want you to join me right now and declare flourishing that whatever we have gone through, whatever we may have been going through, I want us to declare that we are moving. And, and, and right now, beloveds, I don't want us to focus on, on, on you know the trauma, on all of those things. We are in healing mode. We are in flourishing mode. We are not just going to survive, but we are going to thrive. Uh, I, I wish we could actually declare that. We could actually declare that. Can we just declare over ourselves, over our homes? Because I, I believe we've had a wrong attitude to COVID. Many of us have just been saying, Ish, King, if I can just survive. And I can just survive. God is saying, get out of the survival moment and begin Amen. to think, begin to thrive. I want us to just decree and Amen. begin to prophesy. Let us decree and prophesy to our house that our children who are going to school, they will not just survive summer writing matric, but they will thrive. They will pass Kadi Distinction. They will pass Baba Lengo University. They will pass Kadi Kum Lade. They will not just survive, but they will thrive. Let us just declare, declare to our businesses that when other businesses are just trying to survive, that we are moving into thriving mode. That no, Yaka business, it's not just going to survive. I'm moving into thriving mode. I'm moving into another area. I, I, I'm becoming a technopreneur, not just an entrepreneur, but a technopreneur who can take technology, begin to move in thriving mode, which means new ideas. Ask God for new ideas, new creative ideas, new strategies to download strategies from his throne room of grace for the business to move at another dimension, for the business to move at another level, because you are not in survival mode. You are in thriving mode. Your children will thrive. Your spouse will thrive. Your family will thrive. Your business will thrive. Yes. And the ministry shall thrive in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we decree and declare to the cities, to the townships, to the social gubes, to the mummy lodis, to even to the santons, that they will also thrive, not just survive. We decree to every province and to every nation in Africa. We speak to the nations in Africa, the Sadak nations. We speak to Angola, Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, Namibia, Zimbabwe, DRC, and Cameroon. We speak to Zambia and Zimbabwe. We speak mm. even to West Africa. We speak to Ghana and Nigeria and Liberia. And we speak even to East Africa, to Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Yes, we mm. speak to North Africa, to Morocco, Sudan, South Sudan, to Egypt. Every nation, 55 nations in Africa. We decree and declare that we are in 
thriving mode. Africa, you will be a breadbasket to the nations. You are a palm tree that will flourish even in this season. You are a palm tree that will feed the nations. You are a palm tree that will bring direction in this time of no direction. We decree this to the nations of Africa. We decree this to the cities of Africa that we are like a palm tree, that we are planted by the rivers of living water mm. and our leaf will not wither, but we will be fruitful. We will be productive. God will take the lessons that we have learned and those lessons will build us. They will build our spiritual muscles. Those lessons will build our character. Those lessons will build our faith and we will line up with the kingdom mandate. We will line up with a kingdom agenda. We will line up with a kingdom mandate and we will take dominion and we will subdue and we will take authority and our nations shall align to the redemptive purposes and we will build our nations according to the original blueprint and pattern of heaven. And so Father, we want to thank you that we are like palm trees. Our homes are like palm trees. Our nation is like a palm tree. Tree. Our economy is like a palm tree that, Father, we will not be broken. We will bend, but we will not break. And we will flourish and be like palm trees planted by the rivers of living water. And so, Father, we want to thank you for this time. And we give you glory and we give you honor. And we give you all the, 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 the glory and ask that, Father, release us to go out there as polished arrows in the hands of the mighty warrior. And we decree that may you shoot each and every one of us and release us into our kingdom targets. And Father, none of us here will miss our kingdom assignments, our kingdom mandate, or the kingdom agenda in the matchless name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the Sibandas, Father and for using them and for, for allowing them to be used as a platform of kingdom expression. Father, we pray increase. Thank you for bringing in resources. We call forth resources. Even the angels that are assigned, Father, to the ministry of finance, Father, let those angels in the ministry of financial, in the finance department, Father, we call forth resources right now from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We call forth sponsors. That sponsors will be even right now provoked and activated, Father God, to come and partner with the ministries. We call them forth, Father. Thank you for donors. Some are coming from other nations right now. Thank you, Father, for people who will come in from other nations. Thank you for numbers. Thank you for using them, oh God, as a voice to manifest the truth because it is the truth that sets free. And thank you for using them as a table, as a platform of releasing truth that will liberate nations, that will liberate individuals, that will liberate, oh God, many. And so, Father, we thank you and we declare provision and protection over them. And Father, I decree that, Lord, there will be no backlash because the enemy likes to bring backlash when your people have done well. And so we decree and we forbid backlash and we decree that their lives are protected and we decree that they walk in divine health every one of them their children every member of their household they walk under psalm 91 protection in the matchless name of yeshua and we thank you father god that in fact you will increase their household you will increase their resources and father you will make them into a testimony because you are the one who rewards the diligent heart father reward their diligence and cause oh god cause them father god to be brought before great men before good men, not before mean men, but before great men. Bring them before kings and leaders, Father God. In the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we call forth even resources. I call them forth right now. Every computer that is needed, every vehicle that is needed, I call it forth, Father. Every technology that is needed, I call it forth. Every cameras, more studios, Father, we call it forth. Every destiny helper that is needed right now, we call it forth. And thank you for salaries, for monies that will pay salaries. And we bless you, Father. And we thank you and we declare it done.
in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. 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 We are so excited. We, we are so excited. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle Pale, for the ministry of the word that you have given us today. We are so excited. Uh, Mom, Sibia, uh, we love you so much. Thank you so much for the word. I've got my professor, Dr. Costa, is on, he just came to support. Doc, we love you so much. Thank you so much for the support and for believing in us. And I've got the studio is full. I think you can see everybody else. The studio is full. People came on board and they say we wanted to come and be part of what God is doing uh, today. One of the most amazing thing, one of our colleagues and associates is watching all the way from Bangladesh. He's wow. watching and God's, God's wow. word is going. He sent a, scre a screenshot and say, I'm watching you from Bangladesh. Yeah. God is doing a great thing in our lives. I, I want just to one more update. We, uh, we have already given out our five t-shirts. We've got uh, Deacon Mahadi uh, Hanewe from Pretoria. We've got Mrs. Nomtanda Zomotle from Mahikeng. We've got Ms. Chabalala from Pretoria. We've got Ms. Uh, Sibia from Pretoria. We are also going to place Mrs. Uh, Ayota from Johannesburg with a T-shirt uh, because they have been such a blessing. They give us their platform to work from. Thank you so much for all of you that came that came on, on board. Uh, the whole conference is going to be available uh, on the platform. Connect, tune in, and, and get people to be on board. We have to put a link on the on 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 the on the chat so that you can be able to see if you want to support. You can give as a cheerful giver and support the work that God is doing in our lives. And also there is. Uh, just share the word, share what God is doing, uh, rebroadcast this message so that people, wherever they are, they can be blessed. We love you. We thank you. Thank you so much. We will see you again very soon. Uh, wherever you are, if you need us to be able to be part and, and be a blessing in your city, please give us a call. We can be able to do that. We have been deployed in Deben. They've been placed there. Uh, Wherever you are, give us a give us a call and we'll see what God wants us to do. Thank you so much for today. God bless you. See you again in the near future. All of us let's say. Uh, thank you so bye -bye. much. God bless you. Uh, bye-bye. Uh, last let me my wife pray and bless you, everybody else that came on the platform. none about yeah. the name that is above every other name. Mm -hmm. We thank you, mighty Father. Asina mi lomi, yogu kubonga, nkose ngele, situwe na upageme, agako prita ugulunga, nukukonda kwa komefia. It has been you, Lord, from day one until now, and it shall continue being you. We thank you, Father, that today we know that we are palm trees. Today we know that we are bending. We are not broken, but we shall arise in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, mighty God. Bless us, Lord. Bless us as we will be traveling to our homes. Bless us, Father, and let the seed that has been planted in our hearts and our spirits, let it flourish, Lord God Almighty, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for all our speakers. We thank you, Father, that we are listening to your word. We are listening to your heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for broken crayons yes. from ashes to beauty. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We love you. Amen. See you very soon. Please connect on all the platforms and we will be in touch and we we'll keep on watching. Go to Elevate, Africa, Elevate TV and you get all the information about what to do. There are more t-shirts if you want to place and buy some of your friends. You can order the t-shirts. We can be able to provide you that man is going to be able to assist us to be able to grow the vision and where we are going god bless you amen amen, amen. thank you amen. thank you god bless you. Amen. thank you